Hello guys, this is uh, our fourth video. In this video, I'm, now I'm going to talk about compound angles. Why do we need compound angles? And how to define compound angles? And, uh, and what are the formulas available to find compound angles? Okay, first, uh, uh, first I'll start with uh, why do we need the uh, compound angle? So, uh, since the beginning, I've been telling you guys about uh, uh, figuring out uh, different trigonometric functions of uh, certain angles. From all levels, you are familiar with uh, certain special angles, say a uh, 0, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. You know, you already know uh, the uh, trigonometric ratios of these special angles. Uh, in in A levels, uh, we are focusing on uh, defining trig ratios for any angle there is, right? Any angle there is, and we used quadrant rule for that. I think uh, you are already familiar with it. Then, uh, and uh, you learned that uh, if you know any angle, so uh, trig ratios for any angle in the first quadrant, then you can uh, figure out trig ratios for any angle for any angle in the other three quadrants and uh, then uh, we saw that uh, if we know uh, trig ratios for uh, any angle in all the four quadrants uh, you can uh, go for uh, other multiples uh, multiple angles uh, by rotations right by adding or subtraction uh, number of rotations or revolutions so uh, in all these theories we used uh, the concept of a rotating line of unit length rotating line of unit length okay so uh, we already know 0 30 45 60 and 90 and uh, how to define trig ratios for these and what are the values uh, of trig ratios of these specific angles so uh, are there only these special angles but you know that the first quadrant consists of all the angles let's say angle is theta all the angles from 0 to 90 degrees but we only know these five angles so what should we do so somehow we can have to figure out defining uh, we, can, we can have to figure out obtaining trig ratios of other angles except for these special angles so this is the first step into figuring out uh, certain other angles so uh, this first technique is called compound angle technique so in this case what we do is uh, we start with uh, the basics we start with the uh, acute angle uh, first we start with uh, what we already know so we already know these uh, five special angles uh, let's see we can compound certain other angles using the uh, already known angles for example I can compound an angle like this say 30 degrees plus 45 degrees so this uh, this is equal to 75 degrees so let's say you need to know uh, the trig ratios of sine 75 which is not given which we don't know yet so this is also equal to sine of 30 degrees plus 45 degrees so uh, 30 degrees and 45 degrees come under special angles let's see whether uh, we we can come up with the formula to define uh, define the trig ratios for uh, angles such as 75 degrees so we can compound other angles as well let's say uh, 45 compounded with 60 you get 105 so this is also uh, not in this this is this was also not included in the special angles category but this is also a, uh, this is a new one so likewise uh, now we can go about and do, doing it and uh, like in the previous cases uh, we have to come up with the construction 
because uh, in order to find trig ratios you used right angles first then you define trig ratios using a Cartesian plane so in this case let's see how, how we can compound two angles and uh, what sort of a construction that we can use to find the trig ratios of the compounded angle okay so uh, first we'll look at uh, what is 30 plus 45 how do you define 30 plus 45 so 30 and 45 is our positive angles which means positive rotation let's say you start with uh, let's say this is O and uh, this is the X direction and you have the rotating line here uh, first you rotate the rotating line by uh, you can start with 45 degrees. it doesn't matter what you start with uh, first you rotate positive uh, leave which means anti-clockwise 45 degrees now the rotated line initially it was in on the OX axis now it is at this position right OA still it is of unit length then uh, you can rotate it again by 30 degrees right you can rotate it by 30 degrees so when you rotate it by 30 degrees now the rotating line would be at this position right B so the whole rotation the complete rotation will give you 75 degrees now uh, in order to define the trig ratios of 75 degrees uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna use these uh, 30 degrees and 45 degrees and, uh, the, uh, and uh, in, in the next slides we will see how to obtain this okay uh, so first uh, let me uh, let me define this for uh, for two general acute angles let's say uh, alpha and beta is between 90 degrees and 0 these are two acute angles so alpha could be 30 and beta could be 45 so anything so uh, first you rotate by alpha then you rotate by beta so the compounded angle will be given as alpha plus beta which is the compounded angle so the compounded angle alpha plus beta will rotate uh, the rotating line from OX axis to this position, right? X O. First you get to A, then you get to B. So if you want to define the sine of alpha plus beta, you need to know these sides, right? So the perpendicular side here, say this is E, and uh, OB is unit length. So if you want to define sine alpha plus beta, so this is a right angle triangle. Sine alpha plus beta is BE, BE, this opposite side, divided by 1. Why, why, why uh, I put 1 here? Because we are looking at a uh, rotating line whose length is 1. Way. If you want to define cosine of alpha plus beta, you can define it by cosine of alpha plus beta is the adjacent side here is the OE OE divided by 1 so this means if you know what is BE what is BE if you know this distance you, you know what sine alpha plus beta means so if you know OE OE this distance you know what cosine of alpha plus beta is so uh, Let's see how to obtain this uh, using this construction. Right. So this is the construction I make. Since uh, we already know uh, the trig ratios of B, beta and alpha, uh, we're going to use this relationship. Uh, so we have to uh, construct right angle triangles pertaining to beta and alpha. This is how we're going to go about doing it. So for alpha, you can construct a right angle triangle as OAB. OAB. So this is the right angle triangle. You can construct for alpha. So alpha is included in this right angle triangle. So what is the other right angle triangle? So since we are looking at a rotating line, we have to uh, make certain constructions. 
So the other right angle triangle is which per which pertain which is pertaining to beta is O B C O B C you have right angle triangle here. O B C is a right angle triangle. Okay. Now if uh, if a hypotenuse and, uh, and an angle is given, you know how to find the other two sides. You have seen that in the previous video. Let's say uh, now uh, in order to uh, define uh, sine sine alpha plus beta, you need to know only ZE. You need to know only Z. What is Z? If you know Z, then you know what sine alpha plus beta means. So. Uh, now our aim is to find what is CE. CE is equal to what? C is equal to CD plus DE. CD plus DE. This is what C is equal to, right? It's just adding up two lengths. Now, what is CD? Okay, first of all, uh, using this triangle OBC, using this triangle OBC, I can find what is BZ. I can find BC. BC length is OC sine beta. OC sine beta. So what is OC? OC is one unit length. So BC becomes sine beta. See, I have written here BC becomes sine beta. Uh, then we'll look at OB. OB, what is OB? OB is also in the OBC right angle triangle. So using this uh, hypotenuse and this uh, angle beta, I can write OB, OB as 1 cosine of beta. So OB as 1 times cosine of beta. So OB is cos beta. That's it. So uh, now I know what BC and uh, OB is. So I want to find what CD is first. First, uh, let's see how to find CD. So CD is included in CDB triangle. CDB triangle. So when you look at CDB triangle, I'll uh, zoom in on this. CDB, CDB. This is also a right angle triangle. You can see the construction here. You already know BC is sine theta. And uh, what is this angle? Right, so since this is alpha, this is alpha, you know this angle is 90 minus alpha. If this is 90 minus alpha, this is also 90 minus alpha. Since this is a right angle triangle, then this would become alpha. If this is 90 minus alpha, this would become alpha. Now this is also a right angle triangle. If this is alpha, this is 90 minus alpha and that leaves you with alpha here. So if you are unsure about that, uh, unsure about how I found the alpha here, you can ask me during the discussion. Right, this is also alpha. So if you, if you know uh, an angle and uh, and the hypotenuse, you know how to find CD and DB. So CD is sine uh, beta. So uh, let's say BC times sine alpha. Cos alpha, BC times cos alpha. DB is BC times sine alpha. BC times sine alpha. Right, I have written down here that DC, DC this length, DC this length is BC cos alpha. BC cos alpha. Right. Uh, now, uh, now, uh, in order to find C, you need uh, to know CD. Now you found what CD is. Then uh, we'll look at DE. What is DE? How to find DE? Now using this construction, you know that uh, DEAB is a uh, rectangle. So DE is equal to BA. DE is equal to BA. Now how do you find BA? Now OAB is also a right angle triangle. OAB is also a right angle triangle. This is O A B. This is a right angle triangle with alpha being here. So OB you would know is, is cosine of beta. 
if you know cos beta how do you find AB uh, you know OB and alpha so OB sine alpha then this OA becomes OB cosine of alpha I have written it down here now DE DE length is also equal to BA now BA is included OAB right angle triangle now uh, BA can be found using OAB right angle triangle like OB sine alpha right OB sine alpha now I can write the uh, length using these two uh, values I have obtained instead of uh, CD CD is also equal to DC I can write BC cos alpha plus DE instead of DE I can write uh, what is BA uh, B, for BA we uh, obtained uh, OB sine alpha now I have BC cos alpha plus OB sine alpha so what is BC BC is already found by using the properties of right angle triangle here BC is equal to sine beta equal to sine beta then you have cos alpha what about OB now OB was also found OB as cos beta so this is cos beta then you have sine alpha right so we we have found a relationship uh, for sine alpha plus beta this is a compounded angle alpha plus beta we found this by using trig ratios of <coughs> uh, angles that we already know beta and alpha we already know <coughs> sorry now uh, we will write this uh, since uh, I have taken alpha hmm, uh, as the first angle I will write it as this sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta so this is the formula for sine alpha plus beta so likewise we can write down other ratios as well <coughs> so, for example let's say uh, alpha is equal uh, 45 and beta is equal to 30 degrees how do you find this so sine uh, 30 plus 45 degrees so uh, uh, you can write the, uh, you can use this formula now so the formula is sine first angle first angle is sine 30 then cosine of second angle 45 degrees plus cosine of first angle which is 30, 30 degrees times sine of the second angle now what is sine 30 sine 30 is half cos 45 is 1 over root 2 plus cos 30 is root 3 divided by 2 sine 45 is 1 over Two, two. so you can see here that uh, 2 root 2 is the common denominator 2 root 2 you have 1 here plus 2 3 uh, you know that you don't uh, leave uh, rational numbers in the denominator so I'm going to de-rationalize this uh, so 1 plus 2 3 uh, times root 2 over 4 right so this is uh, the trig ratio for sine 75 degrees see so 75 degrees was not a special angle but uh, we have uh, came up with a technique to find the trig ratios of 75 degrees right so 75 degrees sine 75 is equal to 1 plus root 3 over 2 root 2 or you can write it in this form as well okay <coughs>